This is actual data from a hospital, um, or a series of hospitals. Let's see, we have about 8,300 observations. Well, there are a lot of things we can look at here. Um, profit, so how much the hospital made from each uh, patient, how much they charged, um, what discount they got, how it worked. Uh, but I want to look at the number of days people were in the hospital. I'm going to create a new column. So I just uh, did right click to create an insert a new column. I'm going to call this um, time at hospital. And since I'm using a version of um, Excel that's fairly new, I can do the difference of dates just by subtracting one date from another. So you can say equals this, that's the date they left, minus the date they were admitted. Now that's weird, and that's because it's formatting as a date. I'll just change that to um, general, and now it's a number. So there's seven days between October 14th and October 21st. That's correct. I will just double click that little arrow to take it all the way down. So it's just applied this for formula for my entire column. If I want to get a sense of this, I just go to insert, I will do a histogram, and I can see that there's some extreme values here. Um, most of my people are only at the hospital for, uh, it looks like it's about seven days, um, but there are some extreme values. So let's remove them. I'm going to format this as a table. Uh, so I'm clicking format as table. I do this because it makes it easier for me to work with. Um, so time at hospital, click on the little arrow to filter. I'm going to say, um, let's see, less than 10. Right, and that has filtered all these values, so anything greater than 10 has been excluded. Um, so I can take this filtered column, and let's do histogram of it. And uh, you can see my values range from 0 to 9. Um, as I would mentioned before, Excel does a goofy thing with the binning here, so it's really kind of nuts change this, let's change this just to a number of bins, and what happens if we do 10, um, that starts to look a little bit better. It's a little clearer on what our bins are, but even here the values are not useful. Like 2.7 is the cutoff, and 3.6, so values of 3 fall in between there. It's just a goofy thing with Excel. If we change this to Nine, does that help? Yeah. Um, so here we go. That's the distribution of how many days they spent in the hospital. Um, so I want to analyze this more. So I would like to, I'm going to take these values, I'm going to copy them, just put them over here in a fresh sheet just for ease. Let's go ahead and calculate the mean. here. The reason to copy them over is so that I'm only copying the uh, lower values, no values bigger than 10, so it's the filtered values. So it looks like on average people spent two days in the hospital. Um, but let's get a confidence interval for this mean. In order to do that we also need to know the standard deviation. So we have a standard deviation of a sample. S. Click here, take the entire column. So that's my standard deviation of the sample. Um, the formula would is to take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the count. So let's go ahead and say count how many numbers are here. 8,300 and 75. Okay, so 
So our formula is going to be the um, standard deviation divided by the square root of uh, this number times a value of our confidence um, and then add that to our mean. It's a little, little complex. Um, so let's say we're going to say equals 1.96. That's 95% confidence interval for a um, series of numbers that's bigger than 30 uh, times this value divided by square root of this value. Okay. And so I've got a mean, and this is now my standard error. I've calculated my standard error. So my range would be equals this plus this value and equals this minus this value. So I expect that they, um, the true mean, the amount of time they've spent on average is between 1.94 days and 2.02 um, .02 days. Okay. Um, so that, here I'll label these as my stand. Sample. This is my count. This is my standard error. Um, my high end, my low end of the confidence interval. There's a lot of steps to this, so there feel like there should be a, a better way, and there is. So let's do this. Equals confidence uh, norm the alpha I'm looking for um, is going to be 0 0.025 that's for a two-tailed test divided by or my standard deviation value I need to give that and I need to give the size go. So we get the exact same values. Um, I didn't need to change my alpha value because I, I used um, that. All right, so we get the same thing. That calculated our standard error for us. Um, instead of having to 